There we go. Welcome to JC Gaming. Going to do some reviews and how to gear nature heroes. Um, again, we're going to skip the one stars and two stars. They are all food. This game has no use for two stars as of the state. So we're going to start with the three star starter with Thorin here. Uh, the green alchemist. Uh, like all the alchemists, he has some utility. So uh, if you wanted to gear him here at Wart or not Wartech, uh, Witchstone. Um, but he gives random buffs uh, that are uh, offensive based buffs. Um, he also gives a heal over time, and he has this uh, skill 2 that's kind of, or A2 that's shared with uh, the other one where he extends the uh, duration of all of us on one ally and takes another turn. Pretty cool. 30% chance to blind, good luck, 50%. Decent little utility buffer, debuffer. Here we have the Nature Bear, Torg. He is food for Gaius Fusion. Um, he's one of the three stars you need to make a four star. I would use him for that. Other than that, he falls in the same category as bears if you wanted to run him. Um, you know, he does damage based off of armor, so run him, you know, uh, an armor, double armor, HP on glove build. Um, he does a provoke, uh, not a taunt, provoke, so single target, you, you attack me with your A1. Um, and then he also uh, gives all nature allies 2% bonus HP, so he can be situationally useful. If you need a green tank, then he can be useful, but as we're going to see once we get into the 4 stars, there's actually some really good green tanks out there, and there's an amazing 5 star green tank that you can fuse. So I wouldn't focus too much on him. Early game green tank, sure, don't go past, you know, maybe 4 star with him, and then you can use him as fodder to make a 6 star. Alright, these guys again, you know, all the elementals are kind of in a weird place where you're like, well, based off max HP, based off, you know, again, heal based off max HP, but only if the target dies, so I need attack to make that work. Do I go attack? Do I go HP? Um, <laughs> super in-game runes, these guys can be super annoying, but when you're in endgame, you know, you're, you're gonna make one of these for fun, for toys, or for toys, just to play around with. You're not gonna make one to seriously progress in the game. You're already progressed if you're playing with these guys. Uh, don't feel bad using this food. Um, Thistle, uh, she is, no, her the fire one is used for the fusion, I think. So. But anyways, um, so she has uh, the same, you know, single target 20% HP and remove all debuffs, quick fix. Um, same first ability as all the other fairies, and her third one, it does a slow, uh, and a 50% chance to reduce speed bar, so, you know, whereas you have the Order and Chaos ones are awesome, the Water one is a, like, one of the best early healers you can get, she, the Nature one, doesn't really do much healing, um, she more provides utility, so honestly, instead of, like, you know, the other ones you can run them on like Life Silk or something like that to increase their healing output. With this one, I would do Witchstone because she just does, she's more about debuffs and stuff. You know, uh, she does give debuff immunity, so. She's honestly not that great. Don't feel bad if you feed her away, but if you need a nature, I guess, <laughs> you know, immunity or something, she just doesn't provide enough, I think. Oh, what's up, Dart? Thanks for following. You know, she doesn't really provide enough to really stick around on her own. And then we have Petra, who is the one of the best solars in the game. Um, by solar, I mean he can do content on solar. He's a farmer. He has an XP boost, 10% extra X XP if he's the leader of your team. He has a shield, which is based off his max HP. He has a heal, based off his max HP. And he has damage, based off his max HP, which can also stun. So if you ever pull a Petra, don't beat him away, keep him, because he's going to be your best bet at creating that early game farmer, the guy that can solo master content. Um, even one at 5 star with like, you know, just some mediocre bone runes can farm some of the early master content. Um, and again, if you guys go check out on Reddit on the sidebar, there's like a table of XP. You'll see there's a huge jump running from hard to master. Uh, you get like almost double the amount of XP per energy. Like not just XP overall, but per energy whenever you upgrade from hard to master. So your goal is to get a farmer that can solo master content. And Petra is going to be the best way to get there. Um, you know, unless you're uh, lucky and pull like an auto early on. Um, but you run him, just stack as much HP on him as possible. Kind of funny, we have a Z Asian who is a really good player that's in uh, our alliance. Um, he also has his own stream, by the way. 
um, check it out if you want to see him uh, do POTA. He's pretty good at that. I think he's on 30 now. Um, but anyways, uh, he runs his uh, War Tech. So he has like a bunch of HP, but he also has crit rate, crit damage, and the War Tech set on there. And he's able to run Blinding Ice with his, with that build up. So it's pretty cool. And I imagine, you know, you fight a Petra in the arena with War Tech on, and he hits you for like, you know, 8k plus or 9k, whatever. Um, it, it, it would surprise you, so um, yeah, some interesting things you can do with him late game as well. He doesn't fall off late game. He's an early game farmer that can coast all the way through the end of the game. Um, definitely a, a monster keeper. And then we have the, the dog. <laughs> I'm sure after the last uh, hero event, a lot of you have these dogs. Um, but anyways, uh, so uh, you know, same Sikkim, guard dog, his A3, um, his aggression. He has a 30% chance to keep attacking based off his max HP, and he guards an ally. When he guards, he gets 15% of his max HP healed to him. Uh, so if you want, want to run one of these, you know, run them um, as, I would say, like Titan Guard. Um, oh, that's another thing. So Petra, he's also good on Titan Guard later, late game. When, once you get, you know, good base HP on him, Titan Guard helps him absorb damage from the rest of the team. That way he can be more than just a solo farmer. Um, the dog, I would run him Titan Guard too. Any tank. That doesn't have uh, taunts or provokes. Um, I would go well, with anything that doesn't have taunts because provoke is just single target. If it's an AoE provoke, um, then you can run revenge on him. Uh, but if he doesn't have any, you know, AoE, everyone attack me, uh, then you probably want to run Titan Guard so that he provides extra uh, support and survivability for the rest of your team. Dog would go the same way. Uh, throw as much HP on him as possible if you want to run him. Uh, I wouldn't fear about feeding him. Not you know, it, it, and Petra is better than him. <laughs> just throw that, throw that out there. All right. Uh, so now we have which one? This one's Sir Oakhorn. He's a Minotaur, the cow, as they call him. Um, the nature one's really good. I, you know, last week we went over the water one. The water one I said was amazing. Which done blah 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 blah. The nature one is almost just as good as him. Uh, the reason is, is he has the same first, second, and passive as the other one. So reduce speed bar stun and gives a shield whenever someone drops below 30% HP. Uh, his skill 3, instead of uh, support, like he's buffing your team, he uh, debuffs, or he doesn't debuff, but he reduces the speed of the enemy team by 50%. Okay, and then he also increases your speed by 20%. Um, whenever you skill this up, this 50% goes up to 60%, put Witch Stun on top of that, and that's a 90% speed bar reduction. That's huge. So run him Witchstone, get crit on there, so he crits and Witchstone actually activates. And, you know, this lead the charge, yeah, you did, the Alpha Strike teams would love to have this guy. I got beaten one in the arena the other day because I forgot about uh, how useful this guy is. Um, he, there's no initial cooldown on this skill either, so turn one, he can do this. If you can buff his speed enough so that he goes before the enemy team goes, um, you know, your team is guaranteed to go because uh, that's a huge speed bar reduction. And not to mention a 30% with Witchstone uh, buff to your team's speed bar. Um, so really good for Alpha Strike, really good for just speed manipulation content in general. Um, so yeah, he's, he's, he's someone who I would keep, um, unless, you know, he's three stars, so you're more likely to, you know, pull more of them. Um, so if you need food, you can feed him, but because you're eventually you're gonna probably get another one. But he is something that I would say is, is fun to play with and, and worth you know, uh, building at some point in the game, if, if you needed a speed bar manipulator. Alright, uh, so now we got, what was this guy called? Sagashiel? Sagius? Sagius U? <laughs> the green monk, nature monk, right? Um, so he has the same heal, 30%. Uh, he does remove debuffs and puts them on an enemy. Pretty cool to mess around with. Um, unfortunately, it's only a single target, so he can't really play the, the role of a solo cleanser. Um, yeah, but if you need a cleanser, that's that's where most of these these uh, monks come into play, where they do a uh, cleanse, it's just single target. Um, and then it also, uh, AoE attack, that increases the debuffs on enemies by one turn. Um, so he has some utility to him, uh, you could run him, um, you know, uh, I'd run him Witchstone too, there's a lot of Witchstone in the green category, um, just because of his support utility. and. Uh, you know, he, he does a lot of buffs, debuffs, and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, if you want to play with him, that's what I would do. He's, he's not, you know, super great though. You, you, if you want a cleanser, ideally you want someone that has an AoE cleanse, like a Nath, who we'll get to in a second. 
Um, here is the Nomad, the Nature Nomad Slash, is his name. Um, so the thing that makes him good is he has this 35% bonus XP when exploring. So throw him on an exploration zone with like uh, three one-star or two-star guys, and they get 35% extra uh, XP from that. Um, pretty cool. The rest of his stuff, not very impressive. He has the same revenge, the same A1, and his passive makes his A1 50% uh, chance to deal damage to all enemies on the last hit. They already said that his A1 does crap damage anyways. Uh, so, you know, mediocre damage divided by four spread to everyone. You know, you know hit him with paintball sort of deal. Um, yeah, you're going to use him. If, if you're going to hold on to him, you're going to hold on to him for this. Which means you don't need gear on him because you don't need gear when you go run exploration content. Um, so just have one in your inventory that you throw as a leader when you do exploration and you get 35% extra, you know, XP. Um, if you think about it, so, so if you break down the math, you know, you have four slots. Is it better to put him in one of those slots that you only got three guys gaining XP? Or is it better to have a fourth guy? Well, that's 25% XP, you see what I'm saying? You got four, four divided by evenly, or 100 divided by four is 25. Um, and he does 35% bonus. Um, so he will actually, um, you know, you get more XP by using him in your leader skill um, than you would if you just had four level one guys. Um, so if you wanted to, you know, make one stars into two stars, you would actually get there faster. You would get more two stars over time than you would if you just had four one stars. So there you go. There's a little math. Anyways, moving on, Ivy. Ivy's a pretty decent nature damage dealer. Um, so she has the same split shot that a lot of these uh, you know, pistol ears have. Uh, her second one does an attack and brings someone else with her. So this is kind of RNG. If she grabs someone good, awesome. If she grabs someone like a healer, well, no, not, not quite so awesome. Um, but it, it can still be, you know, on a team where she grabs a, a good damage dealer with her, this can do uh, you know, really good damage. Um, and her skill three gives all allies crit buff and fills her speed bar by 50% and gives people haste. Uh, so she got, she's got some good uh, offensive utility there. Um, I would probably run her two ways. You could run her war tech if you wanted to uh, just you know, use her as a nuker. Or you could run her um, Witchstone, again, another Witchstone nature guy, if you wanted to more focus on her giving offensive support. So she gives the support for your offensive guys, and then she uses Buddy Up to, you know, send them to attack and get an extra turn. Or not an extra turn, but an extra attack. There's a distinction there. Extra turn, cooldowns get reduced. Extra attack, cooldowns do not get reduced. All right, moving on. Uh, another really good... Uh, Witchstone candidate is the Nature Ringtail. Um, he has a lot of debuffs. So damage over time whenever a shrapnel hits, which is his A2, uh, that does uh, three three hits with a chance to armor break. His A3, it does damage over time to everyone and does bonus damage based off of aim. And he also, if they have armor break, he does an extra dot. See, two turn dot, or one turn dot, no armor break, two turn dot if there is an armor break. So dots from this, dots from this, Shrapnel defense break and 30% chance to do an AOE attack. So definitely run him Witchstone because of the defense break and the dots. Those are going to be more powerful if he Witchstone and he crits. Um, and his A1 doesn't have any really extra utility to it, so you wouldn't want something like uh, the set that lets you, you know, get an, an additional A1 attack. Uh, Swift Steel, you know, he's not a good Swift Steel candidate. Um, you could run a War Tech if you wanted to do. I haven't seen really his damage output, so I don't know if he'd be worth it on War Tech. But from a dot output standpoint, he does a lot of dots a, on an AOE scale. So that's that's where his focus really should be, which is which then. Anyways, moving on. All right, so we have the Nature Ranger Walker. You actually get a Walker for free when you start out. They're okay single target damage dealers. Um, I don't know if they're really worth putting like a lot of time and effort into as far as six starring them. Um, they, they, they do uh, if, if the target is marked. So if, if you need a single target nature damage dealer, she can work. All right. I didn't personally, I actually fed mine away. Um, but this headshot, if they're marked, it uh, crits and ignores 25% of the armor. So if you wanted to maximize her damage, the way you would do it is you would put War Tech on her, 
and then you go all crit damage. Go crit damage on the weapon, go crit damage on the gloves, uh, and then power on helmet and uh, yeah, either HP or armor on the chest. Doesn't really matter. But the whole idea is that you would set it up where a target gets marked, and then you use this A3. You don't have to worry about her crit rate because it will automatically crit if they're marked. And it ignores 25% of their armor, which is going to boost the damage significantly. Um, so that's how you would use her if you wanted to use her as like a. She's a one trick pony. That's it. You know, she's she's there to use this A3, uh, four turn cooldown, let you skill her up. Uh, and, and even then, I haven't seen anyone really build her and show off how much damage she could do. Um, maybe one day, you know, I would like to get to the point in the game where I have my base teams already set, and so I can like take a hero like this and sort of just test its damage output. You know, put some really good gear on it. And see how much headshot can do, you know, with with like you know ridiculous like 200% crit damage and war tech on top of it. Be interesting to see. Unfortunately, I don't have the uh, <laughs> the free ships and cycles and gear and all that to do it right now. I'm, I'm trying to progress, so um, but it would be fun to play around with. Um, so keep that in mind. I, I don't think the you know, early game she does a decent job of being a nature damage dealer. She's gonna fall off. But she might be able to pull off some surprises. But generally, you don't want one trick ponies. You want guys that have more more than just one thing that they do. Anyways, uh, speaking of more than one thing, so we have the nature saber tooth razor mane. Um, he, is he no, he's he's not. Uh, I don't think he's one of the the crafting requirements. Um, but he's just like his fire brother, where he has damage over time on the first one, prowl on the second, ambush on the third. Um, which, okay, so this one's close. It doesn't reduce um, attack bar like the fire one has. Um, but it slows the target. Um, and then he has prowl, uh, reduces the debuffs on him. So his whole idea is he stealths, he does some slow stuff, and uh, he does damage over time. Uh, these guys are really good for dungeons because all the two of the dungeons, uh, the best way to beat them is to just dot up the target you're trying to kill. The bosses have ridiculous health, put a lot of dots on them, and they end up dying after like three or four turns. Great strategy. So if you need a green daughter, um, single target daughter, he's you know, a pretty good go-to guy, especially since stealth uh, you know, makes him so he survives a little bit better. He only gets hit by AoEs. Um, and also, you know, any of these daughters, you don't need to worry about power on them because their damage comes from their dots. So you can go full HP armor um, and just put enough aim on them that they're landing the dots and you're good to go. Uh, as far as what sets, uh, Witch Stone would increase the dots, but because he dots on his first one, he's a candidate for Swift Steel because if he gets multiple A1s, he can put multiple dots on. Um, so, you know, Witch Stone, if he crits, it's guaranteed to be a dot that does 7.5% of the enemy's HP. If he's on Swift Steel and he does an extra chance, then it's a two dots, which is 10%. Um, so, you know, you gotta sort of cost benefit, figure out what works best for your team and what you want out of them. Uh, stronger dots or more dots. All right, Shield Maiden. Uh, Nature one isn't quite as good as the Fire one because she doesn't have the heal block on her skill one. Instead, she gets a shield. But if you need a Nature you know, tank early on, she does have Taunt which you know, goes up to two turns on a four turn cooldown, not bad. Um, she also does an AoE heal and block buff, and uh, she gets a shield whenever she taunts. Uh, so she has nothing to stop at, she's nothing to ditch out. The only problem is, once you pull a Blaine, she's gonna become obsolete. You're gonna use Blaine instead of her. But if you needed a nature three star tank, she's a, a good candidate for it. Better than the other three star nature heroes. Uh, nature Freeblade, Jay the Bold. Um, so this one, they have the same, they all have the same A1. It's A2, does a crit buff and crit multiplier. And if he kills the target, it gives it to the whole team. So if you set this up properly so that he gets the killing blow, it's a great buff to the rest of your team. Uh, his AoE, remember all of these guys have AoEs on their A3. Uh, if it uh, crits, it power breaks and blinds your enemies. Since these guys are damage dealers, you want to crit anyways. Uh, so you're basically always going to be giving your team power, or, power breaking and blinding the enemy team, and ideally giving your team crit, crit rate and crit multiplier buff. Um, and a power buff, because if you kill an enemy with Shark Strike, which is the second one, then you know he gets a power buff on top of that. 
Um, I would, you know, try to build him as much burst damage as possible. Um, so I would run, you know, Tech on him. Uh, the only problem is, is these free blades are a little squishy. Uh, so you have to balance between survivability and damage output. Moving on, and then we have the nature uh, oath bow, Taewon. So the stalking tiger. Um, this one, yeah, all the oath bows do ridiculous damage. So as a strictly DPS target, he's going to outshine the free blade, for example, that we just talked about with equivalent gear. If you put the same gear on both of them, the oath bow is going to do sub substantially more damage. Um, you want to go war tech on him, get your crit rate up. Uh, balance between survivability and attack. Because he's in that 4, he has inherently a little bit more survivability, so you can lean more towards the attack stats on him. Um, but, so, if he, 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 his whole kit revolves around armor breaking and extra effects if guys are armor broken. Um, so he does 50% extra damage on his A1 if they're armor broken. His A2 is the armor break ability. See, so armor break for three turns, 100% chance, as long as they don't block it. Um, his A3 does an AoE attack, and if one of the enemies, see, if an enemy, so if any of the enemies have armor break, then it spreads the armor break to everyone. So this basically turns into an AoE armor break if you use it after his A2. Um, so, you know, great for, for spreading armor break. And then again, you know, his A1, 50% extra damage if the armor broken. Um, and then he also increases his damage based off of aim. So you can stack aim on him to, uh, to, to further increase his damage and increase the chances of armor break not getting blocked. Uh, he doesn't need an extra chance for it to proc, 100% chance to proc. He just needs it to, you know, uh, counter the block effects. Great damage dealer. Um, then we're going to talk about a not so great damage dealer, Rogue. Um, the reason he's not so great is his, so all of the uh, barbarians, they have, they're, they're the enrage heroes, you know, all of their stuff is based off of enrage, are getting a rate enrage effects. His enrage effects only happens whenever he takes damage. And it's only a wind scoot up 40% chance to go enrage, or to go berserk, uh, not enrage, berserk, uh, whenever he gets attacked. Same thing as his passive. 50% chance to gain a power buff when he's attacked. Um, he has an AoE attack, which is, you know, nice. I think he's one of the only ones that has an AoE attack. Um, and, you know, if he's Berserk, he has the same A1 as all the other ones. This one, you know, he's by far the worst. Um, I think everyone knows it. The devs know it. They've said that they might be going back and looking at him, reevaluating his skills. I think they definitely need to, because, um, you know, you're relying on him to get attacked. You know, and he's, he's a damage dealer, so are you supposed to run him as a tank? And so that he takes damage, and then he's always enraged, like how, how and, but then you can't control him whenever he is berserk, you know? So I, I'm not quite sure how how you would really use him. Um, if you have one, hold on to it, because they might, they, you never know when they're going to buff, debuff, modify heroes. Um, so you never want to feed away your four stars unless you have duplicates of them. Ah, and then we have Silas, uh, the green magic, magic tech bard, right? The rocker, the green rocker. Uh, he is a great immunity uh, healer. So he, he gives immunity to the entire team, and he heals the lowest ally with 20, er, for 20% of their HP when he's ascended. Um, and he gets an extra turn after this. Um, his second one, 25 plus 5, 30%, and uh, four turn cooldown. And his first, and that's AoE, so that's AoE heal, and his first skill reduces the cooldowns of all of his other skills um, on a 50% chance. So I would definitely run him uh, Swift Steel would be my recommendation for him. Um, that way you're getting more A1 abilities and more chances to reduce your, your cooldowns. For example, if he procs Swift Steel, um, those two attacks, statistically you have a 75% chance of this activating at least once, and you have a 25% chance of it activating twice. So 75% chance that these two cooldowns are going to be reduced, 25% chance that these two cooldowns are going to be reduced by two. So, you know, this is what, six cooldowns? Once you skill them up, that's four cooldowns if his Swift still procs. This one, from four to two, two turn cooldowns if his uh, Swift still procs. You know, uh, it's, it's pretty buff. Uh, he's, he's a great healer uh, and great immunity grantor, <laughs> if you will. All right? Uh, uh, what way do you would ruin him? Um, I, well, I already said Swift Steel, but you'd, you'd probably go uh, either 2 HP 
one armor or two armor, one HP, depending on your gear and what you have. Um, so now we have the nature uh, battle mage, Logan. Uh, so he has the same uh, first attack. Uh, his second attack grants everyone reflect. Uh, and it says, it's funny, some of these descriptions say what it does, some of them don't, but this one says what it does. Reflects 30% of the damage. Um, and he also heals someone, a little, little extra heal in there. I guess they figured, you know, just reflect isn't good enough. It's done a little 20% heal on one target. Um, it actually goes up to, uh, you know, 35%. So, decent heal um, on sort of a attack-based unit. Um, and then he attacks three times. If he crits, he gives all allies aim and power buff. Okay? And then uh, his passive... Uh, give all attacks a 20% chance to deal damage over time. Um, this guy, you know, is just screaming, put Witchstone on. He has a lot of utility. Witchstone would also uh, increase the reflect damage. Um, it increases his buffs from here. He has a lot of, you know, buff uh, support for your team. So go Witchstone on him, get his crit rate up. And you get his crit rate up for Witchstone also, or Witchstone, but for his A3 also. Uh, so that he's always giving out this aim buff and power buff. Um, but yeah, so that's how you would use him. Uh, you can choose to make him damagey, a damagey, <laughs> a damage dealer, or you can choose to make him uh, have more survivability or somewhere in the middle. Um, it sort of depends on how you want to use him. If you need him to be your nature damage dealer, he can do damage. Uh, but if you, you know, want to have him more in a supportive role, then you might want to put more survivability into his gear. All right, uh, so now we have the nature beetle. Um, Nature Beetle is, is pretty good because of his passive. Whenever he debuffs an enemy, reduces their speed bar by 5%. Um, he also does an armor block debuff. I think they all have this hard and shell ability. Uh, armor break and AoE armor break. And his first one uh, does a slow, 50% uh, chance to slow. Um, so again, this is another good Witchstone candidate. Um, I, I would say either go Witchstone or go Titan Guard. Because, um, you know, you're going to build this guy probably beefy and tanky anyways, because he's not really there to do damage. Um, so if you put Titan Guard on him, he helps the team survive. If you put Witchstone on him, then these buffs and debuffs become more effective. Um, this AoE armor break, or not armor break, armor block buff and block buff are really good for team survivability. Don't, you know, don't uh, underestimate... Uh, the, the usefulness of an AoE armor buff. Um, and then an AoE armor break too, so he's you know, messing up everyone's armor. <laughs> or manipulating everyone's armor. Um, but anyways, yeah, build him tanky. Uh, I, I, would, I would go Witchstone on him. Alright, then we have uh, Lee. Now Lee is material for the guys crafting. Um, but if you wanted to also play with him as well, he does do a single target provoke right here on his A3. So single target. Um, if it crits, you know, uh, he, he provokes for two turns instead of one turn. Um, you know, it's only a single target, so take that with what you will, whereas, you know, auto, this AoE one, has a lower chance, or has a 50% chance versus this is a 100% chance, but it's still AoE, so I think that's a little bit better. Um, yeah, and then whenever he, do, he provokes, he also gets a reflect buff. Um, he has the same man up ability that the other ones have. If someone instantly goes, um, or he kills their attack bar so they can go twice if they already have a full attack bar. Um, and gives them a little buff, and his A1, uh, he has a chance to gain a crit buff. Um, so with this A1 combined with his A3 that it needs to crit, you don't really have to run him at 100% crit because he's going to almost always have this crit buff on. 70% chance is a pretty good chance. Anyways, moving on. Uh, so now we have the nature mechanic, Vaughn. Um, so she has the same first, the same uh, evasion, crit resist buff on the second. Evasion really good once you get it skilled up. One turn, not very useful. Two turns, super useful. Um, but her A3 is what makes her unique. She steals a buff and gives it to all allies. Unfortunately, you can't control what buff is stolen. It's a random buff that the enemy has. Um, so she's... So another one of the niche monsters that, you know, say you were fighting against uh, a, a tank that has uh, immunity, you know, you can steal the immunity off of them, but again, they would have to only have that ability. So maybe if you're fighting a team that you know has only one buff, and that one buff is what is making him strong, then you, know, you get to steal it and get to put on all your teammates. Um, that being said, you know, she is outshined by her fire and uh, order chaos sisters. Um, so she, she's useful, but at the end of the day, you could feed her to the fire one, and it wouldn't, you wouldn't shed a tear. 
Um, <laughs> so, uh, and she also has two heal every time, so three if they're uh, below 30% HP. Oh, you would ruin her. Um, you know, just build her tanky. She doesn't deal damage. None of her abilities really deal much damage. If you wanted to, you could do uh, Witchstone again to provide her buffs a little bit better. But, you know, she, she, like, it would, the Witchstone also affects the heal over time as well. Um, so yeah, you could do Witchstone, probably be the best four set effect. Um, or you could just go straight survivability and just, you know, try to use this A3 as much as possible. Uh, Alright, now we have Gwen. So Gwen is one of the best um, paladins, one of the best tanks in the game, mainly for his A4, um, which gives himself invincibility. So he has the taunt that all the other ones have, he has the self heal and you know, damage based off the armor. In his A3, uh, there's a counter attack uh, and gives himself a heal every time. So if you look at his A2, A3, and then his A4, you see that he can taunt, he can counter attack, and, and do a heal for the entire team. And then he gives himself an invincibility too. Um, so, you know, he can't take any damage. You can have a tank that's taunted everyone, taking no damage and 100% chance to counter attack as well. Um, you know, so, yeah, I don't think I need to say too much about how that could be useful. You know, it just kind of plays into the natural. Uh, you're attacking me, but you can't do anything to me. It's pretty awesome. Um, how you would ruin him? I would ruin him uh, the counter attack um, build. Um, even though he has built in counter attack, it's only two turns on a four turn cooldown. Uh, that's not always up whenever you have your taunt up. Um, or you could just build him with the you know, uh, steel base, the ice steel, and um, I forget what the lower one's called. But the uh, the armor sets, you know, that increasing his armor increases his damage output. So you can just go straight uh, defensive base gear on him, or you can go the counter attack uh, gear on him as well. Um, so it's up to you how you want to ruin him um, or gear him. Uh, but but he's a super useful tank due to his immunity. Yeah, you know, that gives plenty of time for him to get healed up back to full life on your healers. Um, yeah, you'll see a lot of uh, the devs, uh, both Nighthawk and Rychart, have showed him being used to, to tank um, off element dungeons. So he can tank the fire based dungeons uh, pretty easily due to this skill. Alright, and then we have the Nature uh, Pirate. Yeah, Nature Pirate, Calico. Um, so she has the same A1, puts a bomb on. Um, her, uh, her A2 can steal buffs, 30% chance, but it does it three times, so your chances are you're going to steal a buff. Um, and then we have another run out of guns, which blows up all bombs on an enemy, on all enemies, which is great. Pair her up with an AoE bomber, and it's, you know, that's going to be a lot of fun to use. I'm really hoping to pull one of these in the upcoming event. Um, and then she also has this A4 leader skill. Um, that gives uh, all enemies power break and crit break at the beginning of the turn. So you start off each match, you know, crippling the enemy team. Pretty cool hero. I'm, I'm psyched, psyched to see uh, these pirates in action. Alright, and now we have the demoness, Absent. So Absent has a lot of debuffs. You can either run her, like, like all the other demonesses, you can run them Witchstone and go more towards uh, increasing the effect of their debuffs. Or you can go more towards war tech and uh, a more damage based thing. Um, as far as whether you should run power or HP or defense on them, again, you want that balance between survivability and offensive capabilities. Um, but since she has more debuffs, you know, you might just run straight survivability and just use her as sort of a manipulator, a debuffer on that Witchstone set. Um, uh, so she has the confused, she has the, the same A1 extra damage for debuffs, for each debuff. Um, A2, same one, the uh, attack that confuses a target, which confuses awesome. Um, her A3, though, is an AoE heal block, so great against uh, Life Silk boss, for example. Um, and it heals, it gives a, uh, all allies heal over time. So she has a little bit of uh, utility for the team as well. And that's what sort of steers her, her more towards a utility based. Uh, unit than a damage based unit. Uh, her A4 hits a single target three times, 
and has a chance to increase their skill, skill cooldowns. Um, you know, hitting three times is going to happen at least once, unless you're super unlucky. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I, I would definitely run her, like I said, either Witchstone, or if you wanted to, you could go War Tech and, and do some damage with her, but more, she's mo mo mostly a uh, you know debuffer. Especially with that heal bot. That heal bot on A3 is really, you know, where where she she shines because it's AOE heal bot. Alright, we have the nature Valkyrie, um, Freya. Uh, Freya is one of the fusion materials, I'm pretty sure. Is it her or is it I don't know, we can we can go check real fast. Ah, gem lines up. It's nice, it's the water one. That's right, Lee Lee's the nature four star. So it's so the water one. Nope, oh, wrong one. We'll talk about her in a minute. She's awesome. Alright, so Freya. If you look at her skills, all of I think all of the Valkyries could just sort of <laughs> need to be reworked. Um, gearing, I would gear them Titan Guard because they have a guard. You know, they take damage for one ally. But it's really hard for in practice for you to set that up to where it actually works. Um, you know, it's very easy to exploit if they're in the arena and you're fighting them, you know, and they're on defense. You just attack one target, they guard it, and then you focus the one that you actually want to kill. Um, doesn't do crap for AoE attacks, because it only protects one person. Um, but she, she does do a attack that, um, you know, calls someone to go with her, while also lowering, uh, the duration of debuffs. On allies um, so it's not really a cleanse it just reduces the buff count or the debuff counter by one um, it's the same thing that Lily the water uh, fairy has on her a3 it's kind of funny you know? this is a nat 4 versus Lily is a nat 3 and I would argue Lily has more utility than she does granted she has you know guard but she does have this, the leader skill that gives everyone reflect for two turns at the start of each turn. If you wanted to build a reflect team, maybe, but there are other heroes out there that on turn one can cast reflect, so does that justify a spot on the team for her? I don't know. And that's what all of these heroes, whenever you're like, should I use them, should I not, you have to look at what they can do and say, do they justify a spot on the team? There's only four spots. I don't think she ever justifies a spot in the game, in my opinion. Um, you know, certainly you could build specific teams for that. Um, I just, with what I have, she doesn't have, she doesn't belong anywhere. Anyways, uh, how you would ruin her? I would ruin her, uh, how do we skip over a nap? We did not skip a nap. <laughs> I would ruin her uh, Titan Guard, so that she actually absorbs some damage from the rest of the team. And, Provide some usefulness <laughs> if you were going to use her. And HP, HP, defense, 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 HP, either one. Um, Alright, so let's talk about Anat. Anat is the nature spellbinder. We talked about her a little bit at the beginning of the stream. Uh, you people on YouTube are going to see that. I didn't record it. Um, I was comparing her to Aos, by the way. And that's that's where my discussion was at the beginning of the stream. Anyways, um, so yeah, so she has the A1 blind, 50 chance. Uh, her A2, which is what makes all the spellbinders great heroes, is an AoE cleanse that transforms all debuffs into heal over times. Amazing. Um, her A4, which is her passive, every time a ally gets a debuff, she gets 15% uh, attack bar. So her attack bar is constantly filling up if they're applying debuffs to you. So great for a cleanser. That's what you want. You want your cleanser to get more turns and quicker, or get to her turn quicker whenever she needs to cleanse. And that's exactly what Nat has with this. And her A3 does a 50% heal on a single target, removes all debuffs, so again, another cleanse, and gives them debuff immunity for three turns. Um, so you know, most content you're running with a tank that you know is gonna get focused, this is a huge heal for that tank, and it grants some immunity. Um, so, and, and it clears any debuffs that happen to still be on them if, you know, Purify hasn't triggered it yet. Um, so she is a great support. Um, all around in almost every aspect of the game. Um, definitely keep one of one of these. If you're gonna ruin her, I hope you should. You should ruin her. You should use her. Gear her. I keep saying ruin, but it's geared. Uh, so you should gear her. Um, you know, you can go anything that's survivability. Um, 
the same way you would do any of your support characters. I wouldn't do uh, Witchstone, uh, because she does, I mean, you could do Witchstone if you wanted to, um, because, you know, she has hots, heal over times, um, but then she has immunity, so immunity can't be, I don't even know if immunity can't be dispelled. Um, her speed bar would get buffed, I think, with Witchstone. Um, but honestly, it's, you know, it's, I would just run her with, you know, uh, the bone sets, the steel sets, uh, just increase her survivability. Um, you know, maybe if you can, you can even do some bright shield uh, sets on her to get her block up without having to use the boots or the glove, not that gloves, the boots or the ring uh, for, uh, for her block. That way you can use those slots to put more speed on her so that she gets more turns. Um, do like maybe one speed, one block, or even, you know, you can go all Bright Shield or the Ascended version of Bright Shield and do double speed on her uh, last two sets of gear, the Ring and Gloves, or Ring and Boots. I keep saying Gloves, Boots. Anyways. Alright, so now we have the Assassin. Nature Assassin is going to come out soon. Um, all the Assassins, I think, are great damage dealers because they have so much survivability with the nature one, so she has the same crit buff, crit multiplier on herself. Like, self-buffing damage dealers are great. Um, <laughs> a two-turn confuse and haste on the enemy. Makes them go faster while they're confused. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Pretty, pretty hilarious. I would love to see Poison Dagger uh, in practice. We don't know what the uh, you know cooldowns and stuff are. They're probably still working it out. Um, her skill three. Oh, they have this one. They just don't have these ones figured out yet. Anyways, um, so three random targets, heavy damage, whatever heavy damage is. Um, if it crits, she heals herself for 100% of the damage done. So she's like a leecher, you know, uh, and she should be critting because of her first skill and the fact she's a damage dealer. Um, she'd run these, all of the assassins would probably run more tech, you know, uh, they do crazy damage and they have stealth, so 50% chance to gain stealth each time she does damage. Not taking damage, so, you know, the uh, saber tooths have to take damage to get stealth, some of them. Um, this one, whenever she does damage, so, great, great little uh, uh, damage deal here, it'll be interesting to see how they play out. Alright, then we have the dragon. The dragons are debuff oriented, so Witchstone, great candidate for Witchstone, or you can run them uh, War Tech if you wanted to do them to be damage dealers. Um, but you know, they do multi hits on their first skill. Um, <laughs> they have a 50% chance to reduce the speed bar by 25, 50, 75, or 100%. <laughs> So uh, you want aim so that this 50% goes up, so you know more like a hundred percent chance to happen on this tornado skill. Um, you know, and you could go Witchstone to enhance this, uh, but yeah, hundred percent. But it's a chance, and yeah, it'll be interesting to know. Eventually, in a long enough timeline, people will be able to statistically determine what are the chances of these happening. So there's a core there. Um, but yeah, that's still great speed bar reduction. Um, AoE heal block and damage over time. You know, great ability. That's not the like about it. And it's a two turn, or uh, three turn damage over time. So it's 15% of their total HP whenever the dot finally ticks all the way down. Um, so great little ability there. And um, every time uh, the dragon attacks, you gain an armor buff. So it helps with that survivability. Remember earlier I was saying don't underrate the benefits of an armor buff for survivability? Uh, you know, dragon, nature dragon has one built in. Pretty cool, huh? So again, you know, Witchstone for extra, you know, increasing the A2, A3 effectiveness. Um, War Tech for increasing how much damage they do, depending on how you want to use them. Uh, the ba same balance between survivability and damage as far as whether you want power, uh, uh, crit damage, or uh, armor HP. Alright, and so now we have Nathan, the Nature Dragon Mage. This is the only, I think the only Nature Mage that doesn't have a bomb. Um, so you definitely want to go uh, Witch, Witchstone with these, uh, because they're, you know, they're not there to do damage, they're there to sort of control the battlefield. <laughs> the ability is called control, what do you know? Um, so strips a buff on the first one, uh, does an AoE reduce speed bar by 40%. And increases the length of their cooldowns by one. So, like, you know, AoE attack reduces their cooldowns by, or reduces their speed by about 60% if it's Witchstone. Um, and plus one cooldowns is pretty darn useful. Um, and then the third one increases the speed bar of your allies. So, reducing the enemy, increasing your friends, 
and reducing their cooldown. So completely manipulating speed bars and manipulating cooldowns. That's what Nathan is all about. The talent of the Nathan, however you want to say it. Um, and then it has the passive of 30% reduced damage uh, for nature enemies. So, you know, run him in a nature dungeon and, you know, his leader skill is really going to shine. Um, really useful hero. I don't really see any reason why you wouldn't do anything but Witchstone with him. Alright, so now we have the Lich. Um, Murmur. So Murmur does has has some pretty interesting kits here. He does 100% uh, of his power heal to the lowest HP the ally, so whoever is about to die, um, on his second skill, and it and it you know does pretty good damage too from what I've seen. Heal block. Uh, it goes up to 60-70% chance, so pretty decent chance to do a heal block. But it's a two-turn heal block. So life silk dungeon. You know just, just go straight to the boss. You know, heal blocker for two turns, even though it's only a 70% chance to land, as long as it doesn't get blocked, it's, it's going to happen within two turns, and then that two turn uh, heal block is going to last a while. Um, but then the third one uh, does an AoE attack, converts all buffs into damage over time. So bring Murmur against a tank, you know, <laughs> bring Murmur against a Gwen. You know, I talked about Gwen being awesome because he has that immunity. Uh, buff that he puts up. Well, guess what? Guess that, that goes away. It's not a die. <laughs> uh, so he's, he's great for messing up uh, buff based teams. Um, and then he has this extra little A4 that any ally that dies, uh, don't know if it works on himself. It should, but I don't have one, so I can't test it. But anyone that dies, they automatically get rest with 40% HP and they get a death shield so that they can't die for two more turns. So, I mean, you know, great, great for survivability of the team. As long as you're not dying to AoEs, then you're fine. Um, you know, there, there's some, like I have a, a Warmax 6 uh, team that I do now, and it fails, I want to say maybe 1 to 2, it's, it's like 80 to 90% success rate, and I've watched it, and whenever it does fail, it's because my Gwen, he, he goes like retard, and instead of doing his immunity buff, he does the counterattack buff instead, even though I see it's off cooldown. Um, so, so he'll do that whenever he's at like 10% life, and he'll get finished off. Uh, it only happens, like I said, maybe 10-15% of the time. Um, but you know, if I had a Murmur on my team, my Murmur could just pop, pop him back up and he'd be good to go. Um, so very, very useful hero. How you would run him? Um, you know, I, I would run him damage, honestly. Um, would I see damage or Witchstone? Like, you know, Wartech or Witchstone? It's, 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 it's a dilemma. Um, Really, it's what you want out of them. Do you want damage out of them? Vortex is where your damage is going to be. Do you want utility out of them? Do you want heal block? Is that why he's there? Is he there for the dots? Um, then you want rich stone on him. Um, so it depends on what you want. Um, and then same thing with uh, you know uh, what what gear you should put in each slot. Um, he should always go aim because all this you know you want his abilities to land, especially you want his heal block to land on his A one. Um, but whether or not you know you go attack, HP, or defense, or crit damage, is it's really uh, up to what you want him for. Do you want him more for utility, more for damage, or somewhere in the middle? And just kind of you know you can swing him back and forth based off of what you want out of him. Um, I would probably use him like you know put a little bit of uh, power on him, maybe like one power piece and two HP pieces, or or just go crit rate, crit damage, and two HP pieces on him. Uh, but primarily go for Witchstone with the crit rate and the aim to, to utilize his debuffs. Alright, and then we have Gaius. Gaius is the amazing nature tank that we can all now farm. Um, you can craft him yourself. Uh, it takes a while. If you're early game, I would recommend doing it. Uh, it takes a lot of awakening materials. So if you're a if you if you just want to go out there and buy the awakening materials, by all means, uh, early game players go do it. Um, but in the event that you want to spend your money somewhere else in the game, um, you know I would hold off until you know you have a lot. You don't have anything else to work on, or you really really need him before you really go after the crafting of them. Uh, that being said, he is an amazing. All the warmex are amazing heroes. Okay, they have a chance to stun. 30% chance when it's split up, and you should spend any of your map pies just to skill up. Um, and, and damage based off of armor. Um, his second one is the Provoke. Um, it also does a power buff. 
to all allies. So, uh, not, not provoke, excuse me, taunt. So, a three turn taunt with a four turn cooldown. That's, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Um, and he does the AoE power buff, which is pretty good. Um, uh, and also, whenever he is taunting, he purges a buff from anyone that attacks him. So as he gets attacked because he's taunted, one of the buffs from the person attacking him gets removed. Um, and then he gains, at the beginning of the turn, at the beginning of each uh, round, he gains, or stage, I guess is what they call it here, he gains a two-turn taunt. So he starts off with two turns taunt before he even has to use this ability. Um, so if the other team goes first, it doesn't matter because he already has taunt applied to him. That being said, where should you go on him? Well, I would definitely go Iron Claw, the counter counterattack set, because uh, you can counterattack and you can stun people. So he's almost permanently going to be taunting. Um, his counterattack is going to make him be able to, uh, you know, counterattack and stun and remove buffs. Um, you want to go double armor, single HP on him, um, unless if you had the right gear, you could go crit rate, crit damage on him, and you know, make him hit people back, sort of revenge for a lot of damage. Um, most likely though you want him to just be as tanky as possible, so like, you know, armor, attack, or crit rate, armor, armor, HP, um, and then for the ring and the boots, you could either go block for more survivability to prevent debuffs from getting landed on him, because you don't want him to get stunned, um, or you can go aim to increase his chances of getting stunned. So it's a yin and yang balance of aim for more your stun, offensive stun, or block for more preventing him from getting stunned or debuffed. Um, so it's, it's your call which one you want to go. Monitor your gameplay and sort of adjust as needed. Uh, if you see that he's failing because he's getting stunned or debuffed or confused or something like that, then put more block on him. Uh, if you see that you know, he's very rarely getting debuffed, then go with aim so he does more um, you know, more stunning. Um, I would probably go one and one. I would go one block, one aim, and then I would go probably like a sun shield or uh, the other shield. <laughs> I think sun shield's the ascended one. Earlier I couldn't think of what the ascended one was. Now I can't think of what the basic one is. But the one that increases your block, the two set that increases your block chance, I would go you know one set of that, the iron claw set, and then on one of his you know two bottom gear pieces, the ring or the boots, go aim, and on the other one go block. That'd be a pretty good balance of the two. Alright, so now we're going to talk about Rift Caller, Katya, the nature Rift Caller. Um, you know, 50% chance to curse, goes up to 100% chance when she's ascended. Um, AoE, uh, block break, it's uh, pretty useful. And it can't be blocked, so screw your block. Um, and another AoE, so she has two AoEs, that slows and silences. Um, and if they're cursed from her A1, it puts them to sleep. Uh, these these uh, heroes are very good. They have very good modifiers from what I've seen for AOE attacks. Um, so you could go Witchstone on them to increase the effectiveness of their debuffs, um, and they still do good damage. Like you know, comparable to some of the three star, four star on War Tech, I would argue. Um, or you could just go War Tech on it and just completely AOE wipe out the field. Um, so it's up to you what you want to run. Um, you know, she, she, since she's a nat 5, she doesn't need that much extra HP. Um, so you could probably run something like, you know, crit, uh, crit, attack power, HP, and, uh, you know, either another HP or crit damage on the gloves. Um, and she's, she's just, she's gonna shine. She'll, she'll do a lot of damage and double AoEs that, that have debuffs as well. Uh, very good hero. Alright, um, all the Blade Dancers, they're almost cookie cutter of each other. They attack fast, they do a lot of hits, and then they do a lot of dots with their flurry at the end of it, right? Um, so everyone I talk about is the same. You want to build them fast, you want to build them to hit hard, and that's, that's pretty much it. You know, War Tech, Speed, and they're good to go. This one even has a passive that isn't a leader skill, so she doesn't have to be in that leader slot. Um, but she does a four turn haste. Four turns is a long, a long haste buff that she starts off with. Um, and since all of her damage scales off of speed too, she's gonna just hit that much harder. Uh, awesome single target attacker. That's the only downside to them is they're single target. Um, but that being said, that's like for a single, they're, they're, I think she is the best nature single target damage dealer. So there you go. Um, now we have the nature pony, actually unicorn, pony, whatever. Uh, wild main. Uh, all the ponies are great healers. Um, yeah, their skill one heals a uh, single target. 
by a small amount, 5%. Skill 2 is a pretty decent heal, uh, but it can also revive for extra cooldowns. Uh, and her skill 3 does a shield. Uh, it's based off of their max HP, not based off of her max HP, so it's not as good as there's some skills that, you know, like, like Petra's does a shield based off of his max HP. Um, but it's still pretty good, and it also does a cleanse. So AoE cleanse and shield. Um, and so, so it's kind of a combination of the spell binders plus a little bit extra, because she does that shield up there as well. And then the uh, passive is a leader skill that uh, has a chance to put a reflect buff on an ally whenever they're attacked. Um, you know, it's, if you don't have a leader skill, pretty useful. There are better ones out there, though. Alright, and now the, or the last nature hero is the nature warlord, uh, Sikaru. Uh, Sikaru is, uh, well, so I said that the, uh, you know, this chick was the best single target nature damage dealer. You know, arguably, I think in, like, if you look at rounds, like in three rounds, I think she'll do more single target damage. Uh, because she's going to go more. Like, she's probably going to go, like, two times every time the enemy goes once. So in three rounds, she's going to get six turns. Uh, you know, you wouldn't really build your Warlord that fast. Um, so he's not going to go as many turns. But he's probably going to do almost as much damage because he's a slower, harder-hitting uh, hero. Um, <clears throat> so it ignores 25% of the armor on his A1. Um, he does a 30% chance to mark, and he armor breaks, and it's an AoE, so great AoE damage. But his A3, all of the uh, Warlords have really good A3, so his A3 does great single target damage, strips all buffs from them, and uh, increases any debuffs they have on him. That combined with his uh, A4, that whenever he kills an enemy, all allies get Berserk and immediately get a free turn. So they go Berserk, which means you can't control them, but they get, you know, 50% buff of basically every stat, um, they immediately get to go. So they immediately attack. Uh, so if you can like land a killing blow with Punishing Blade, um, then your entire team just goes crazy. So um, for content like Arena and stuff, you know, he's, he's really good for that because you have your whole team there behind you. Um, whereas the Fire one that we looked at two weeks ago, he gets to continue attacking whenever he kills someone with A3. The Nature one, his whole team gets to attack. So that's sort of the trade-off there. Um, you know, they both have their uses, their advantages, disadvantages. Uh, if you know, if you know, the, the fire warlord can solo stuff really, really quickly because of his A3 versus the nature one. You know, he can, I don't doubt he can solo stuff because he's got great damage output. Um, but it's not going to be as fast as the fire one. That being said, he still does amazing damage and has amazing synergy. Um, with his, his, his skills, and that's that's what makes a good hero. They, their, their abilities should have good synergy to them. Um, anyway, so that is all the nature heroes. Um, so yeah, oh, and of course you would ruin him, war tech, uh, you know, with the balance of attack and survivability. Uh, since he's in at 5, you can go a lot more attack focused, you know, than uh, you probably only need the HP. The HP from the chest piece probably all you need on him. Um, once he's six starred. So yeah, War Tech, get his crit up, own stuff, and watch as your entire team goes crazy on him with this here A4. Alright, cool. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. That's it for the Nature Heroes. Next time, uh, we will go over the Chaos in order. Um, you know, for those of you, I know the people, there might be a few of you lucky enough to get some Nat 4, Nat 5 uh, Nature Order Heroes. Less so with the Nat 5s on... Yeah, but a lot of people are going to pull the the uh, the three stars because most likely you're going to get three stars from your order of chaos cores. Uh, so we'll kind of spend some more time talking about the three stars on the order and chaos uh, sections because um, there are some really good three star order chaos heroes. So that'll be in the coming two weeks. Um, all right, YouTube, thanks for joining us. Uh, if you like the content, subscribe so I can get you know the custom URL. I think I need a hundred subscribers so. Yeah, only like 8% of the way there. It's coming. Alright, see you guys.